Hi, my name is Lily Hubbard, and today I'm going to tell you the story of how I met my Thai husband on the beach in Koh Samui, Thailand. The first day I came to Koh Samui, I fell in love, and we have been together ever since, for the last seven years, since 2013. So I'm from the United States, and I was living in New Orleans before I came here, and I was pretty much living the American dream. I had a very successful restaurant called Coquette. It's one of the best restaurants in New Orleans. And on the outside, it seemed like I had a really good life, but inside, I was not happy and I was had been in a long relationship, a 10 year relationship since I was 18. And he and I owned the restaurant together and our relationship was coming to an end. It was a really stressful time and I needed to find myself and I needed to spread my wings and be on my own. But I was very codependent on my ex because we'd been together for so long. We owned the restaurant together. But in New Orleans, I was practicing learning and, t and getting acupuncture with this Vietnamese acupuncturist. His name is Dr. Kwong. Oh, number. Oh, man, we're good. Go to come visit Da Nang, okay? Da Nang, yeah. And get it. Back and fire treatment. Feel good, okay? I promise. And I would go to this acupuncturist maybe once or twice a month and I would go there and help him as well, like apprenticed with him. He offered me the opportunity to go with him to Vietnam on a volunteer trip to help the blind and to travel up and down throughout Vietnam, going to blind centers, teaching the blind how to do acupuncture. Because believe it or not, the blind people are very good acupuncturists because they can f sense out the pressure points on a person's body with their sixth sense, with their internal senses because they can't see, and they're able to find where to put the needle very accurately. So I went with him on this trip and I was so scared. It was like a big thing for me, but I knew I, it was, I felt like a calling inside. I knew I needed to go on this trip and spread my wings and do something on my own and be independent and learn how to, yeah, just be on my own. So the trip was for one month and it was crazy. It was a wild trip. I love that. I explain <laughs> with you later. We explain to you later. But time and get up, time and get up. Time and get up, time and get up. I had never been to Asia before. I've never seen people live like the way that they live there and being in the real part of Vietnam where people have so little and are suffering and you know going to these blind centers people there have nothing but they were so happy and they had such good spirits and they were so happy that we were there meeting with them and spending time with them and it just showed me a whole new way of living and when that trip ended I decided that I wasn't ready to go back to the US, to New Orleans. So I extended my flight and I went into Cambodia with another girl who was on the trip. She and I went into Cambodia, we went to Angkor Wat, and that also blew my mind. Even Cambodia is almost like worse than Vietnam, really, the poverty there. And she had to go back to the US and I still had another month of traveling. And I always wanted to go to Thailand to learn Thai massage. And I was planning on going to, I guess, Bangkok to Wat something, I forget the name. But to, I, there was a, there's a really good uh, Thai massage school in Bangkok where you could take classes. And I met this one guy and he was like, oh, well, I'm going there. So why don't we just like take the, the bus together? I'll help you out. Cause I've never traveled before. And before I was in Vietnam with Dr. Kwong and he had made all the travel arrangements and I was leaving my friend behind. So I was like, okay, I'll follow you to Bangkok. And then on the bus ride there, he was like, you know what? You, sh you should definitely come to Koh Samui. You're gonna hate Bangkok. And yeah, the, you can learn Thai massage on the beach in Koh Samui and that would be so much better. And you know, I love beaches and who wouldn't love an island beach, right? So I said, okay, well, if you're going there, I'll just go, I'll head there with you and like that was a really good decision not just because I don't I would have been so lost in Bangkok so he and I we booked our buses to from 
Cambodia to Bangkok to Bangkok to Koh Samui. And we got to Koh Samui. We found both two little cheap bungalows on the beach in Mainam. And I walked down the beach that morning because we took the night bus there. And I walked down the beach and I saw, I see this little beach bar that I go into. And the beach bar I go into, it was called Satang Bar. And as I'm sitting there drinking a drink, I don't know what drink, probably a beer, but I look over and I see this Thai man looking at me and he's at the next beach bar, but I, it kind of looks like it's the same beach bar. It's kind of hard to tell. And he was looking over at me and I was looking over at him. And we were just making eye contact for like 10, 20, 30 minutes. I don't know. And finally, the owner of the bar, the Thai guy, he was like, said something to the man. And the Thai man basically fell out of his hammock, comes walking over with this big grin on his face. And that was Watt. And Watt started talking to me. Where are you from? How long are you here? Where are you staying? That's like the, always the questions they ask you. So... He was like, you should come over to my bar. I'm over there. And he invited me over to his bar. And I closed up the check at that bar, walk over to his bar. And he's cleaning a glass. And I sit there and he turns around and he said he almost fell over because he didn't expect me to come sit at his bar. Ooh, I'm getting like a little bit sweaty even thinking about this. So... We started talking and he asked me if I would want to go out to dinner with him. And I had just been in Vietnam with a Vietnamese acupuncturist showing me around like the authentic parts of Vietnam. So I was like, oh yeah, I definitely would love to go out to dinner and get some authentic Thai food with a Thai, real local Thai person. And so we went out to dinner that night and We've been together ever since, basically. And he asked me if I would be his girlfriend pretty early on, and I said yes. And he started, He showed me for that whole month around Thailand. I think about a couple weeks, or a week after we first met, he was like, will you come with me to my hometown and meet my family? And I said, okay, <laughs> an, an adventure, I'm down. So he lives on the mainland in Champagne. I think he called his sister and he was like, hey, I met a beautiful American woman and she was like, oh, how'd you find? And he was like, and she has blue eyes. <laughs> so he was just bra bragging right away. I felt like, honestly, I felt like so special and such a, yeah, like a, a queen around with him. He, oh, he made me feel just so loved and that's what I needed. And I remember going out to a club with him to Ark Bar, I think. We went to this club, and if I had to go to the bathroom, he would walk me to the bathroom, wait for me outside the bathroom until I came out. He would be like guarding me. I felt so protected with him, and it's just something I never experienced really with an American man, because American men are really different. Plus, I've been in a relationship for 10 years, and this was just a complete different circumstances, okay? We spent the whole month together, and then when it came to an end, he took me to the airport, and I started crying, and he said that I made his tears come out. So he cried as he walked away. So I went back to the United States, and I told my mom that I had this idea that we could start an import business, and we could buy products in Southeast Asia, Vietnam, and Thailand, because I had saw some beautiful fabrics and clothes in Vietnam, and we could sell those in the United States. And she was so excited about the idea. So I also told her that I fell in love with a Thai man, and she said, well, then you should just go back to Thailand and start your whole new life there. So she helped me move out of New Orleans. I went back to Thailand and then she came to Thailand a couple months later. We w and we went on our first buying trip in Bangkok to start our import business, our clo clothing business. So that's the story of how Wat and I met. And since then, I opened a yoga studio. I don't have that anymore. I opened a clothing shop on Mainam Walking Street. I closed that. I opened a restaurant called Prava, and that worked for a few months, for, for a few years, but then I closed that, and then I opened up another restaurant called Lilikoi, and 
the coronavirus hit and now it's closed. And now I'm here starting my YouTube channel and I'm just excited by this new chapter in my life and learning this platform. So thank you all so much for listening. Plus I have one son, he's two and a half years old named Luke and I'm nearly seven months pregnant right now as I make this video. Oh, this because I don't know if it's because I'm pregnant or because the subject just made me overheated. But thank you all so much for listening. God bless you all.